Hi, welcome back to Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit. In this video, I've got this Sovereign lawnmower. It's got a self-drive on it. It's a model number. Let's have a quick look in here. Let's just see that on there. It's an XSZ40. So, I've just picked this up for £30, this. This was on Gumtree. The uh, guy wanted 40 for it, and I thought, well, £30 for a lawnmower that looks as new as that, even if it's got this awful SV150 engine, I'm going to pick that up. These retail for a, at least £150 plus in the summertime. I'll get a good amount of money for this, probably about £80, £90, I'd imagine. So, um, I've just checked the blades on correctly, which it is. There's a bit of petrol in it, so I'm going to take it outside. It's another absolutely horrible day here in sunny Yorkshire, but I'm going to take it outside and we'll just try and start it and we'll just see if the self-drive works as well. And to be honest, even if it does work, I'm still going to take this down. We're going to strip the carb off and I'll show you how to service the carb a few things to check and where all the linkages go and anything else we might find as we go along so first of all let's just take it outside before it absolutely throws it down again and we'll just try and fire this mower up right I've just got a few seconds while it's not actually uh, pouring down you can see on there today look at this the mower man t-shirt that Martin Butler made me at Retro Restore um, it's hiding it's lurking under this old burghouse fleece I always wear this my wife's just washed it for me so anyway, just a bit of uh, stuff you didn't really need to know, but I do occasionally wash this. Um, primer bulb on this, an SV150 engine with a primer bulb. I'm not sure, comment if uh, you've seen me do one of these before, so I don't think I've had an SV150 with a primer bulb. And Mick over at Mix Mower says these SV150s are alright, and I shouldn't be so scared of them, so I've got this SV150 engine on this Sovereign deck, so let's give this a fire up and see what we get. so you probably see there's a lot of smoke coming out of that so what I'm going to do which I probably should have done at the actual beginning was just check the oil level but I'm not too worried about that because this has been tipped up to get it in the car and that normally causes that so it should burn off but just for um, showing people what to do if you do get that the best thing you can do is just check the oil level like I should have done in the first place what normally happens if it's been tipped is the oil runs across and it runs into the exhaust part and it just needs to burn off so don't be thinking there's anything majorly wrong with this so I'm going to check the oil level if it looks alright, I'm just going to leave this running for five minutes till this smoke burns off. So, already I can feel a soapbox moment coming on. Um, this is the kind of reason I don't really like these, because it's stuff like this. I want to check the oil. Watch, watch this, watch. This happens, not just once, this happens every single time you get one. Ready? The whole thing unscrews every single time you do this. This never comes apart from this. So, I end up having to take this off. I have to go in the garage and just get two hands on this and undo it. Then I've got to try and screw this awful threaded plastic piece back down here, back down the hole and get it tight enough. You can't really get any grips in to tighten it up under there. There's no gap look. And then just try and get the actual dipstick in so I can measure the oil. So it's really frustrating. So I have this every single time on these. See, it should come apart like that. This engine oil dipstick should come out of here. It just gets wedged in the top of here, so anyway, I've got that apart, I'm going to put that back together and just kind of uh, lightly thread it back in here so I can actually use it and test the oil level. Okay, I've checked the oil level, that's absolutely fine, so what I'm going to do is I'll just put this on time lapse and I'll just uh, let you watch this smoke burn off just to prove that it does actually go away. So it runs, it starts up alright, and it runs, but it's revving up and down a little bit, which all of these SV150s tend to do. Really, uh, I'm never completely satisfied I get these running 100% right. There's only a little bit of fuel in there. I think what we're going to do with this, it's a great start by the way, I mean it starts and runs, no problem, no kickback. The, uh, the drive all works, everything, so that's great for £30. What I think I'm going to do with this, is we're going to strip this down, we'll take the carb off. I'll show you how to service the carb on this and we'll have a look at this primer bulb and see how that works. I'm going to film all these linkages in here. I'll take this recoil cover off and we'll flick it over so we can have a look at the quality of that. Make sure that looks like it's going to last a good amount of time. 
I'll show you where the maker switch is on this that operates the kill switch. If this maker switch doesn't work, then this lawnmower won't start because you won't get spark. I'll show you all these things and anything else I find as we go along. So, good start, 30 pound lawnmower, self-drive, complete with grass box, sovereign brand, which is quite recognisable. It's not my favourite lawnmower. As I've said before, I don't particularly like these SV150 engines, but I ain't got the uh, double cable setup that you normally have with the choke on, so it might be a little bit better to work on. I don't like the plastic decks particularly, but as I've said, these are over £150, and this summer, someone will be more than happy to give me £80, £90 for this little uh, sovereign petrol lawnmower. So we'll just sip these off for this 10mm socket. We'll have a look under here. We'll just make sure everything looks all right. One of the good things about this mower is that it's really easy to take off. You could just replace that. Let's just have a look in here. The things that I don't like about these is this little metal part here. There's like a metal system in here that pops out. You see these metal rods there? And just see there, these sit into this plastic here. And this plastic's only thin. It's only sort of about eight mil thick. And they don't tend to last forever these. I don't like these mechanisms at all. If you look at like a Briggs 35 classic one, it's got like a proper metal system in it, or real thick plastic. Even the Honda ones have got a massive cup that they sit on, on the actual mower. So if you're having trouble with your recoil on this, it's probably because this metal part here fits in the plastic and it's snapped the plastic. So not a great design, but should be okay as long as your mower's running all right and it's not kicking back and you're not having to pull it over dozens and dozens of times to try and start it up. So. Just wanted to show you that as I take it off we're just going to have a look at some of the uh, items on this mower and just see exactly what you get for your money. I'll just say again I can't believe it's uh, I can't believe it's not raining it's supposed to be Storm Dennis or whichever one we're up to this way I think last weekend it was Storm something else Kira or Kiara or Keanu Reeves or whatever and, and you know I, I think I mean it was windy and it was bad and I know some parts of Britain have been affected a lot by it but to be honest with you it, where I am it, it was windy you know, years ago, you just said it was windy. You didn't have to be storm this and that and have a name and anything else. Anyway, I must be getting old. I'm having a rant. I'm having a rant, Martin. I'm talking to my mate Martin Butler at Retro Restore. I'm having a rant. I'm having a weather rant. I've never had a weather rant on camera before. But anyway, while it isn't um, storm, Dennis, I'm going to take the air filter box off so we can have a quick look inside there. We'll just see if that looks clean and tidy. As you can see now, just from them uh, three top bolts coming off, if you take this air filter off as well, here, that just lifts off. That height adjuster is kind of in the way as well, you can move that back it a little bit easier. Take that out of the way. And that looks nice and clean and tidy as well, so all in all this looks like it's going to be a real good mower, just wants a little bit of a service on the carb and we can get into everything. So I'm going to take this in the garage in a minute and I'm going to do a real good close-up video of all these springs and linkages and the micro switch in the ignition coil but I just wanted to show you that quickly because if you unclip the air filter box and take the recoil off you can see how much access you've got to all this here there's no real need to take the petrol tank off we'll just take this air filter box off and we can take this carb off I just want to film this sticker again as well for anybody who might have the same mower just to see if they're um, trying to get parts for it or anything like that there's uh, all sorts of places you can get parts from I use garden hire spares a lot and I have a lot of these spares at my own website which is repair lawnmowersforprofit.com I think you have a specific section on there for these SV150 engines and stuff so loads of places you can get them from and the usual things you need for these little SV150s are things like these these springs and these linkages and primer bulbs just the little things even the little breather pipe that goes out, out the back of the air filter box things that just get lost really so let's have a look at this primer bulb set up here just goes into there, into the side of the carb, and I'm, I'm never really sure why they've not done that on uh, the other mowers. A lot of the other mowers have another cable that goes in here, and that's like a butterfly valve that opens inside. Personally, I think I prefer that primer bulb. We seem to get a lot of starting issues and uh, problems, just basic running problems with these SV150s, but uh, I suppose they're okay for what they are on a deck like this, and it does start and run. Usually what I'd do now, if I was having any problems, I'd just zip this top bolt off with an impact and have a look at the keyway in there. I've shown on loads of other videos where that keyway is and how to check it. There'll be a video in the top right hand corner of your screen actually now if you wanted to go and uh, have a look at how to check the flywheel key. I'll put that up there in the top right hand corner right now. So let's take this in the garage before it rains and uh, we'll just have a 
a real good look at it and take a few bits off it. I'll probably just clean this carb up a little bit before I take it off. But really it's in nice tidy condition. What I usually do just to make it a bit easier in my garage is I'd normally clean this off first and I'll take this sort of stuff out of the way, just set it to one side and I'll probably take this off as well. I'm not sure how easy that is to get off. Let's just have a look at that. Might be able to do that from under there. I'll just take it off and move it out of the way. If not, I'll just undo this handle here. You can see this handle here. If you just undo that, this should back off all this thing. I should be able to get this pull cord easily out of here. What I normally do is take the grass box off, fold the handles down, take any parts off, and then I put it on the bench. And it just gives me really good access to be able to get into everything. So I'm going to set that pull cord off there now. Now I can get in. It's all nice and loose. Remove this out of the way. Make sure we don't lose any bits. I'm going to set this grass box off as well. That's nice and clean and tidy. And then what I normally do is just fold the handles down. So this isn't a very big lawnmower, but I'm just giving you an example of what I would do on a bigger one, just to get it in and get it on the bench, make it easy to work on. One thing just to mention as I'm folding this down, you see a lot of lawnmowers with broken cables where they're split. It's because the cable ends up down the back of here and trapped between the handles. So when you're folding it down, make sure the cables are kind of nice and out of the way. And you can see there, I've got this folded down. I can get that in the garage and just get this on the bench nice and easy. Not the best design, really, because the, uh, the handle bangs into that petrol tank, so I can't get it folded down as far as I need. But we've got a nice little SV150 to take apart in the garage. Just something I want to mention as well. I've just got this in the, the garage here. And you can see how these handles, they actually slide into this actual plastic deck of the mower. Make sure these screws are in here, make sure they're solid because sometimes you'll find that these are missing. You'll go to pick it up or you'll kind of have it half lifted on a bench like this. Like I'm just about to do and you'll find the handles come out. So just be real careful if you see one like this to make sure that these handles are nicely attached and this screw is actually in place. I've actually had a bit of a tidy up in my mower kit. Leave me a comment if you noticed if I tidied up a little bit. I've kind of organised this shelf to um, things I regularly use and got rid of everything I don't regularly use. So I've got like carb spray, easy start, mole spray for the bathroom, an old toothbrush, anyway that's something else. But um, really basic tools that I normally use and as you can see I've got this on a bench and it doesn't take up too much space at all. I can nicely get this on a normal size workbench. I've got my little light set up here, that's just like a floodlight and my normal just strip lights in here so it's not brilliant but this light just comes across here and it just means when I'm filming stuff you get a real good view of all the springs and linkages and everything. So it's uh, pretty much the most basic setup ever and I've only got the minimal tools I need but really that is all you need just to get started repairing these for profit. Just uh, some basic tools. In this box here, apart from the actual sockets I sometimes use, I've kind of got a, a bit of a messy box of everything I regularly use on stuff like this and that's kind of all I really need. Having a great big socket set like this is, is brilliant once you get up and running, but you don't really need it at first. I've just got them and this uh, these spanners I bought years ago. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to remove this air filter box. There's three 10mm bolts that go through here. This one here just attaches to this actual like, metal bracket here. And these two here go right through the carb and into this engine. So just before you do anything else, as they always do, just remove this spark plug lead here. Look at that there. All that dirt coming out of there. That wants a new plug on there, so before I do anything else as well, I might just I might as well just remove this spark plug. So see if I can get this out of here. Yeah, that's not too bad. I thought it was going to be worse than that. I'll just get that out of there, and uh, I can swap this over. Yeah, it looks a bit dirty. That and I've got a box here. I buy these in uh, tens. I sell these on the website, repair almost for profit. I don't use anything else on these uh, little SV150 or Briggs engines anyway. These are NGK plugs, never had a bad one ever. This is a B2LM. These fit all these SV150 engines or any Briggs and Stratton classic engines. So we've got that out of the way, we've removed that and I'll fit a new plug at the end as well. So I'm just going to quickly loosen these bolts here. I don't know if you can hear any, it's pouring down now so I've just got back inside in time. So I'll start with this one. That just comes straight out of there like that. Make sure we don't lose anything. Grab my little part, parts tray there, like a magnetic tray. And I'm going to just undo these two. I'm going to keep hold of this because once these two come completely out, this whole carb's going to drop down. I've still got it connected to the fuel line and into the fuel tank and everything. So I'm just going to back those off, but kind of leave everything in position so nothing drops down. I'm going to show you the reason for that now. And what I want to show you is down the back of this air filter box here, you can just see there's this fuel line here that runs right through here, obviously to this actual fuel tank. 
makes complete sense. But once you drop this carb down, you're going to start getting fuel running out of this. So I've actually got my uh, forceps somewhere, and we're actually going to clamp this fuel line here with some forceps just to minimise any fuel running out. Then the only fuel I'll have that comes through is what's left in the car because there's no actual fuel tap on here for turning this actual fuel line on and off like you get on a more premium lawn more like a Honda so um, got these forceps, just see how they just clip shut this is uh, from my mate Mick at Mix Mowers, he does this a lot so I've got some decent ones now Mick, I've got some better ones look so I'm going to put that on there like that and I'm just going to push these shut like this and then they stay shut and it clamps the fuel line here so that actually stops the fuel flowing through back into the carb there I've not got a whole potentially a whole fuel tank of fuel that can come out of there so I'm going to do that before I undo this as well and one little tip before you do this is take loads of photographs of these linkages as well I'm going to show you around these now before we take this whole part off just so we can remember where they go when we put these back on so this is probably the bit of the video most people are wanting me to film if you've got in a mess I'm going to show you exactly where all these springs and linkages go there's only one linkage on this and that's because it's got a governor arm on the back here See this little governor arm? Make sure that's free. If you've got one of these SV150s with two cables on, make sure that this governor arm isn't touching any of the cables. Make sure all this moves freely. You can see there's only this one linkage here that runs right to the governor arm under there. And then you've got one spring. That's all we've got to worry about, just this one spring that goes across here. And this little linkage here that's all connected. It's all one linkage. This just goes into the top of this actual little part here on top of this carb so you can see this is a real simple setup you've got the primer bulb here and that goes into this part on the carb there you can just see where that goes in there so you can see where everything goes you've got the little screw on the top that just sets your idle speed if you back that out it might idle a bit slower on an engine like this I wouldn't particularly mess about with it and you can see where all these little parts go on the carb before I take it apart as I've said take some photographs this is a micro switch here you can hear that click, you can see it move there, listen. That does that when you pull this. See? If that doesn't click and disengage, you won't get spark, obviously. Your lawnmower won't run. So that's where all the linkages and springs go on this little SV150, on this little Sovereign. You may have a different configuration on this. If you have, take a look at the top right hand corner now and I'll actually show you a video that shows the linkage configurations for a different SV150 setup that actually has two cables running underneath here. So take a look in the top right hand corner now. For that, we've seen everything we need to see there. We've seen the spring that hooks through and had a really good look round. Let's actually take this carb off now. So I've just had a quick look round and I've decided what I'm going to do first. I'm just going to remove this breather pipe off the back of here. I'm going to take that off first. Put that in my little parts tray. You can see the whole thing starts to want to drop down now. What I'm going to do first, I'm just going to get some needle nose pliers on here. And I'm actually going to take this fuel line off first before I pull this carb off. It's kind of all falling down. So I'm going to get hold of this carb and just pull this fuel line off here. See there, that's off. Because I've clamped it like that, you can actually see there's no fuel leaking out of there either. So I'm just going to leave that in position there. I've got these forceps. I've managed to just wedge them under here. You can see that's just holding this fuel line out of the way. So I've got nothing leaking out. And I've got full access now. I can get my hands on all this carb. The way to unhook these is just unhook this one linkage from the back. And try and do it without trying to turn the carburetor upside down too much. Sometimes it's uh, impossible to avoid. But the less you tip it up, the more fuel you get coming out the top and the sides of this carb. So just be real careful when you do this. And just unhook the one linkage and I'm going to try and leave all this connected up. Leave as many things connected as you can. That's real good advice when doing stuff like this. So anything you can leave connected, leave connected. There's no point taking it off and trying to remember where it all went. So I'm going to put this camera back on the tripod. And I'm going to unhook this linkage from here. And just drop this carb off and out of the way. So let's just pull these two parts out of here. Keep them in the same order. Left and right. Pretty sure they're quite similar. You can see here. This whole thing moves out of the way, you've got that out of the way, you can see now, I've got this whole carb off here, luckily for me it's not dropped down too far, all this linkage is still connected up, everything's still connected, and you've got pictures and videos and everything you need to show you where it goes back together, and this primer bulb here should just pull off, and you've got this whole carb off. If you can clean this carb on your lawnmower that's revving up and down, you're going to solve 90% of all running problems on, on any lawnmower really. 
that's the hunting issues and everything cause it's just this carb so if you spend 10 minutes as you've just done watching this video of how to unhook it and actually how to take this carb apart which I'm going to show you how to do in a minute you can probably keep a lawnmower like this for a good few years more than you would have been able to when it starts revving up and down so really worth investing some time learning how to service these little carbs right brace yourself this is what I call killer tip time this is the best tip I'm going to give them repel almost for profit probably for the last five six years this carb on the SV150 engine has the same fault on nearly everyone I've taken off you see this little actual part here this bracket this whatever you want to call this valve this opens and closes here you can see it's got a little butterfly valve it's supposed to spring they never spring and the reason is it comes with a really really thin spring which is located under here around all this horrible little spring thing here and you see how it doesn't spring you can't possibly regulate the speed completely if it isn't actually springing and moving about so you'll find if you're real careful there's an actual little spring it's really thin really really badly made and it's attached to these little uh, carbs see so, yeah, I'm just going to grab a screwdriver and see this little thing here I hope you can see all this there's a little spring there if you can unhook it like that just take it round loop it round once more like that and take it over the top and hook it see got there eventually sometimes this spring kind of snapped off you can see there how it's actually flying about like it's supposed to do once you've got it like that there's a real good chance these SV150 engines will run and have a little bit more of a play with that make sure it springs exactly as I want it to do you get the idea there's an end that's clamped at this side and the other end you just wind around a couple more times and this will actually spring about right so I've had a fiddle about with that you probably get the idea it's a bit looks a bit of a mess I've got that one hooked over there and I've kind of got this one leaning on the back of it and it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you get enough spring tension and there's something to stop it from coming back and you know that it's going to work you can see just how much pull that's got on there it doesn't need to be massive but it just needs to open and close you can see that that's exactly what you should be getting and that will uh, eliminate a lot of running problems on these SV150s hunting not starting all sorts of things just because of one simple spring under here and this is the same on every SV150 carburetor that I've taken off so have a real good look at this spring if you're having running problems and you can actually buy those as well so now I've shown that make sure that you check that obviously when you put this back together so I've undone this uh, actual bottom ball here we'll take this out get a nice plastic tray take this ball off make sure it's clean and you've got the actual uh, float inside here so I'm going to take the pin out just do everything over a tub then you can't lose anything lift the float out which should have the needle somewhere on this occasion it's stayed in I'll get the little needle out there you can see there pop that back in then inside here you've got the main jet it's got actually got a little cut out in here so you need a small flat-headed screwdriver to get in there which I'm just going to find now as I said I've put everything I normally use in that box there so I've just gone to that box I actually found this one which has got like a real thin end on I should be able to get hopefully in there undo this main jet and take this out and with these carbs or any carb on anything like this all you need to do is take off as many parts as you can get out anything that unscrews take it out and just um, have a look through it and make sure you can get everything out that you see try and remember exactly how far they were screwed in and things like that I'm not going to take that one out because that's just an idle speed that actually doesn't go into the carb but I am going to take this one out on the top sometimes a good idea to do with this is just see exactly how far it's screwed in as well so if I try and screw that in I can find it doesn't go any further so that just screws all the way in sometimes I used to have a little Yamaha jog and some of these are like a, a turn and a half out so you'd have to kind of remember where they went make sure there's no springs on the other end of these these have all got tiny tiny pinholes in them as well anything gets blocked on things like this it's going to cause hunting surging issues so if another one on the side there this is maybe a better example here this little one on the side let's just have a look at that see that goes half a turn one full turn one and a half two full turns 
two and a half full turns. So when I put that in, I need to put it in all the way and back it off two and a half full turns. Remember it's got a spring on it as well, because this mower looking pretty new as well. Obviously it looks like no one's ever been in here. You get a good idea if someone had been in this mower, just by um, looking at the fuel line and seeing if it had snapped or they moved the actual connector on it, or just if anything was loose or the air filter was missing, things like that. So this comes with a little spring on. You can see here, must make sure that that goes back on. I'm going to have a good look round in here, see if there's anything else I can take off. I don't want to disturb this part, that's working nicely. As I said, I don't want to disturb this screw. It doesn't actually go into the carb. And I've actually got a, don't forget to lose, not lose this by the way. I've actually got a little ultrasonic cleaner I've got up here on the shelf. So I'm going to drop this in it and use this little sea foam. I'm going to leave that in there for around 20 minutes with some boiling water. I'm going to let everything go through there. Before I do that actually, I think I'll go and get a cup of tea. I'm just going to spray this with carb cleaner. I'll just leave it to soak for a little bit as well. I'll spray all these parts up in this tub. I'll go grab a cup of tea. I'm going to get my ultrasonic clean and I'm going to put it in there. Just something else to note as well. Make sure when you put everything back, all this is clean. I've just actually sprayed all that over this carb spray here. But this is really nice and clean. I don't think this lawnmower is very old. I'm just looking for a sticker on it. Uh, 2014 I think, yeah, but I don't think it's been used the right lot, it's not very dirty and all these parts there's no kind of sticky oil and grass all stuck to the back of it so I'm going to leave that to soak, as I said I'm going to put it in this ultrasonic um, just for about 10-20 minutes while I go make a cup of tea Alright, so I've got this bubbling away, this is a little uh, ultrasonic cleaner a friend of mine gave me this, I used to work with it, it's an, an old dentist one, I could do with a bigger one really because you can probably see, I can't actually submerge this completely but I just keep moving it round and it's buzzing and bubbling away. You don't need one of these by the way, if you're just looking at doing this for yourself you can always just get some spray like this and get a little can of uh, compressed air, I'm not sure if I've got any in there you know that rain coming down there, I've got a hole in my roof there look for that bucket there. You can get a can of compressed air and just blow it out blow it with this uh, clean, I don't always do this but because I was just going to go back inside and make a cup of tea and just charge my video camera a little bit I'll just put that on with a, I get some uh, this little stuff called sea foam when I started this water was completely clean so it must be doing something it must be getting some of this dirt out of here I'm going to pull that out of there in a minute and I've got an air compressor under here so I'm just going to blow through all the holes uh, on all these little parts here and then we'll just put this back together and we'll put this on this mower make sure this spring's still working and then we'll see if this runs any better and I'll show you a few little tips in here as well and things to look for when we're putting it back together yeah, it's uh, just another miserable February day really so I might as well be in here doing this. So, well, I've still got my sticker. My kids like that. Look. <laughs> I've got a tax disc there. That was off my Yamaha Jog. If you've not seen my Yamaha Jog videos, I'll put a link to them in the top right hand corner of the screen as well. So, I think that's about cut. So, I'm going to take that out of there now. We'll uh, just get rid of all that old dirty water out of there. And we'll put this back together. If you do like what you see here as well while I'm just doing all this, just leave me a comment in the comments section. Do me a massive favour and just hit the subscribe button and tick the bell. That way you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video. You won't miss a thing. Best of all, it's completely free. So, I've dried all this off. I've blown it all out with the compressor, cleaned the tub out and I've got all these nice dry clean parts in this tub. And I've got this cab nice and clean. I've had a good look around it, all the tiny little holes and everything looks nice. So we need to start putting this back together. So. I'm just going to start with this top one here, if you remember here this little brass one on the top, just screwed all the way in just take your time with stuff like this really really make sure you're not going to cross thread anything so you can see there that's going a little bit of an angle wait till it finds where it needs to go and this one went all the way in so I'm just going to tighten that one up we've got the uh, spring here, this was the spring loaded one as well, I think we said it went all the way in and two and a half turns back so we'll do that as well I always try and do this over a bench or over a tub because you drop these little things especially the needle, if you get the needle and it's on a spring the amount of times I've dropped that and then uh, not ever found it again or just like had the whole garage upside down for an hour looking for it and found the needle without the spring, stuff like that so just do it in an area where if you drop it you can kind of either land in a tub or on a towel or something so we'll take this all the way in here we'll take this back two and a half turns don't forget as well when you're doing all these little bits just to clean these off with some carb spray as well so 
let's just go with that, that's half, one, I think it was a little, I think it was flat on it, so we'll call that one, one and a half, two, and two and a half, I'm quite happy with that. This main jet here, this has got tiny little pinholes in it, probably can't get them in on camera, but at the side of it I've cleaned all that out, so we're going to drop that back in there as well, made a mistake with that, this must go in the side with the actual slot, so you can get the flat headed screwdriver in to tighten this up. So we'll drop that in and let it find its own way down to the bottom. We'll nip this back up here. And this should make a good difference to the running of this mower. Although I'm never really completely satisfied with how these SV150s run. This wasn't too bad to be fair. But I think the biggest thing that we've fixed on this is this, this uh, spring tension on here. So we've got that in and the next bit which is the fiddliest bit. Is we've got to get this little needle in here. I'm going to slide this on here and we've got to fit this into this carb. So I'm just going to put this needle back in here. I just want to show you something real quickly with these. These are all slightly different. Sometimes you get a spring on the actual end of this. You can see this has actually got like a little pin in it. And it, it kind of rebounds. You can see hopefully just about a little bit there. It kind of springs about when I press that with my fingernail. It goes in and out. And if you remember when I took this one apart, it was actually just sat in position so I'm going to drop that back where it goes and what I'm going to do with this, this is like a, on the float ball, this is like a tang you can see here this centre piece, you can actually move this about to adjust the float ball so it kind of goes at different levels, when it fills up with fuel this actual little tang here presses on this needle and I, I noticed when I was just having a quick go with it then off camera that what is actually happening is it wasn't really pressing this needle very much at all so I bent that down very very slightly with a screwdriver so when I put this back together now I put this pin in here I'll do my best to film this in a minute you can probably see here this little gasket's falling apart on me here as well should have probably taken that off before I put it in the uh, actual ultrasonic but it was already kind of split so I've got to make sure that goes back through nice and evenly anyway you can see there hopefully you can just about see inside there if you look in here this little part in here like this you can see here just at the top there where the needle is this little pin that I just showed you that springs in and out you can just see there that's actually springing in and out there it wasn't doing that before which is why I bent that tang down slightly just so it touches it a little bit easier so I'm hoping you can just about see that little bit there now it just goes up and down hopefully you can just about see that on camera it's real difficult for me to see exactly what I filmed so I've only got this tiny little camera screen but I've got that back on there, we need to put this on here, we need to put this actual bowl gasket back in here which is all a little bit fiddly and then all we've got to do then is we'll just put this part back on here put it over the top like that and we'll just tighten this back up with this bolt in here so because this carb was a little bit unusual, it didn't have the normal spring in um, and I, I've not seen too many like that, what I'm going to do with this carb is I'm going to connect it to this fuel line before I put all the air filter box and everything back together and try and connect it up down the back of the air filter box. The reason for that is I want to make sure that this needle is seated properly and it's not going to just fill it with fuel and keep filling up and start pouring out of everywhere. I'm going to have a listen to make sure I can hear the float moving. Hopefully you can hear that. You want to make sure that's moving up and down. Just keep your eye on this sort of stuff all the time. I'm going to connect this fuel line up to here. I'm just going to push that on there like that. I'm going to remove these forceps off here. I'm going to keep it level as if it was on the machine. And hopefully, I won't find any leaks. So I'm going to hold that there. I've got fuel flowing from the fuel tank down the fuel line. You can see there. It's all going into the carb. I'm just going to leave that there. You could probably get a bowl actually off a metal tray. I could probably just put this through for a minute or so, like that, just temporarily, just to hold it to save me standing here. I'm just going to keep my eye on that make sure there's still some fuel in this tank so it, I know there's some going down the fuel line as I said earlier there's no fuel shut off valve on this so yeah so once you connect that up you can be sure that the fuel is going down the fuel line it's going to the cab what I'm looking for are leaks I'm looking for fuel flowing out of here or flowing out of the underside or anything before I put it back together I said it's a bit of an unusual setup I've not seen too many like that and connecting this fuel line up once you've got this back on here like this down the back you're trying to get in and get the fuel line on you don't want to get it all back together all bolted back through just to find that it actually leaks 
which it doesn't appear to be doing so I'm quite happy with that that fuel lines uh, connected up and this ball will now be full of fuel in here where the needle goes when the float what happens is the float rises when it gets the fuel in it and the float goes up and when the fuel actually reaches a certain point and the float lifts up the needle actually seats and that's what stops the fuel going any higher and filling this up and pouring out of all here you can see in here it's all nice and dry and there's nothing leaking out so it, in short really the fuel goes in it fills up the float lifts up it seats the needle and it stops it actually letting any more fuel go from in here and that's how it doesn't all pour out but you must make sure that nothing's leaking before you put one of these back together on the Honda ones there's even less room around the back to get in as well and do that so I'm happy that I've got that connected up right what I need to do as well I've got a little clip that needs to go back on there and I think what I'll do for now is I'll actually leave this connected up before I put all this back together but I must remember I just need to put this fuel clip on on here first so I've pushed that back on there as you can see I've got this fuel clip here as well they want to be on, don't ever leave them off just ensures that this isn't accidentally going to get knocked and come off when you're using the mower and I can connect up this primer bulb again but I'm going to show you something with that before I connect that back up what I want to show you here is this primer bulb here if you actually put this to your ear without, make sure there's no fuel in here of course or don't, you know, don't put it directly in your ear but if you actually have a listen like this you can actually hear that and you can kind of put your finger over the end you see the primer bulb don't go down quite as far you can kind of feel a pop so you've got some resistance there and then you know that this is doing its job it's going to push the air down here which is enough and it's just a good way really of checking that the uh, primer bulb doesn't have any splits in and also this actual line here don't have any splits in as well and that way you're going to kind of eliminate a lot of starting problems you can see when I prime there I get a little bit of fuel running down which is exactly what I wanted to see that's perfect so I'm happy with that I'm going to just show you this uh, seal wash on the back of here as well make sure that you just look for that when you're putting this back together you can probably see down here on the actual manifold intake this thing runs right through here like a manifold like an inlet there's actually the little rubber seal on the back of there make sure see that's still working you can you can make sure that that's still there so when you push this car back on you know it's going to seal you're not going to have any air leaks so what we need to do really is just connect up this little linkage here into the top of the cab so to do that I'm just going to remove these two bolts I've just lightly put in here while I was testing that hook this back in and we'll put these two bolts back through this air filter box and we'll get this all set back up so I'd imagine for most people who've never done this and for me really that this is kind of the most difficult little bit to do on some mowers it's more fiddly than others but on this it's not too bad I'm just going to hook that back through there like that you can see I've got that back there, you can see all the linkage I tried not to tip this up too far you can see you want to make sure that all these linkages and springs are moving freely and I'm, I'm not happy with this linkage it gets really really close to this part I was showing you earlier with the little spring I'm actually just going to bend that up a little bit and I'm going to move it, I don't want to feel anything sticking at all I'm going to check the governor arm all moves nice and freely and you can see why here why I really wanted this spring working properly because this all moves, this governs the speed of the engine this doesn't have like an air vane or a governor flap assembly around here this one actually works on this governor arm at the back that's what sets the whole speed and maintains even rev so all this needs to be clean and tidy all the springs and linkages need to move freely particularly this one in the middle so now when I've got that all running as I want I'm going to bolt this whole air filter box back on as well this is why I don't really like these kind of mowers that much because you're trying to hold the air filter box you're trying to get the screws back through you're trying to not knock the gasket off I've actually taken this gasket off here as well because it was just beginning to fall apart so I'm going to stick that back on with something as well and we'll have a go at putting this air filter box back on so you might have noticed on the car we had this little gasket and it kind of fell off I put it in the uh, ultrasonic which I probably shouldn't have done but this happens you know often anyway even without doing that you'll find that these little parts break off now you could try and stick this back on the carb or try and leave it on the carb as you're actually pushing everything back together which is a real pain I found the best way to do this is to actually put this back on the back of the air filter box and stick it on so I found how it goes together and I have some of this display mount stuff and what I tend to do is just turn these parts over here keep this all separate give this a shake here just get this going 
what I like to do with this stuff is just give it a spray on the back of this just to give it some more stick if you don't move everything you can give it a good coating and when you pick this back up you can kind of get hold of this nice and tidily like this and you can put this on here and after just a minute or so this sticks real tight and this isn't going to come off again make sure there's no like residue sticking around the edge of everything and you can just move it about for the first kind of minute you're doing it and ideally it wants a new gasket on does that but if you're in a mess and you're trying to get everything back together the air filter box and these big bolts through the carburetor you might find it's a lot easier without knocking this actual little gasket out of the way just to stick it back on there so I'm going to line all that up nice and even just before it starts to go hard make sure everything can go back through and really if I have any more running problems with that I'll probably find what I'll do is I'll just buy another one but I'm just going to press this down now and make it nice and neat and as long as everything's nice and lined up and the bolts don't go back through and it forms a seal between the back of the air filter box and the carb then you shouldn't really have a running problem so what I'm trying to explain really is I could I could kind of stick that on the carb which is going to cause more of a mess and actually when I get this and turn this over and put this back on it's going to be in the correct position so it's easier to actually stick it on the air filter box and then when I get the actual bolts that go through everything it goes through the air filter box through the gasket through the carb and right into this engine here it's a lot easier than trying to look down the back of this air filter box like this making sure it's not all fallen off so that's just a little thing that I do sometimes and to do that as I said you just want some of this display mount that will uh, get you out of that problem one thing to mention before I put the air filter box on I always fit this actual breather first as well and push this back on the back of this air filter box and this actually goes on here as well the other end actually slides on here like this you can see do that first because when you're trying to get in afterwards it's real fiddly to get in and get that on there and that on the back of the box so put that part in there first and then you can easily click it to the back of this as you're setting the car back together with this air filter box so as the rain batters down what I'm going to do is fit this air filter box back on sometimes you can just put something underneath here sometimes it'll just stay on without any bolts and I've taken them out on this one sometimes it drops off sometimes it doesn't before you do this make sure all your linkages and springs are still moving properly I'm going to grab one of these long bolts here normally start on this side I'm not sure why but I just do I'll carefully go through everything have a look at the back make sure my gasket's in uh, the right place and I'm not breaking that I've got one of them in and started I'm going to grab the other one here I'm not going to tighten anything up I'm just going to real carefully put everything through and just get these started like that you can see there and I'm going to push this in here at the back this air filter breather you can see there I showed you the other side of that that went to the engine before now I've got everything nice and in place I can have a look down the back and I've not got to worry about getting this fuel line on down the back of here because I've already done that first and I'm going to tighten these up I'm not going to use an impact to tighten these up I'm just going to use a, a regular socket to do that so I don't want to strip anything or over tighten anything and if you over tighten these actually what happens is because this is kind of it's not thin plastic but it bends if you over tighten it what happens is you bend the air filter box and you actually end up with an air leak between the air filter box and the gasket which I've shown you which I've just fixed and particularly with, with this gasket being a, a bit of a kind of temporary fix I want to make sure I'm doing these up by hand and also one thing to mention before I do tighten those right up is there's actually this third bolt here that goes through goes to this little bracket here you want to get that in there first before you tighten anything up get all three in and then you'll find you don't have any problems if you forget, you, know, you don't want to do is get two of them in and tighten them up and find out you're not quite level there and you can't tighten it up. So I'm just going to tighten those up by hand now. I'm going to remove these forceps now as well. I just put them on the back of the fuel line as well, just for good measure really, just to make sure nothing was uh, going to leak out if I knocked anything off. So I'm going to tighten these three parts up now. Okay, so they're tightened up. I'm going to grab my air filter. I've cleaned the air filter off, just used a bit of uh, old fuel. I drained out the carb, squeezed it all out, got any dirt out of there. We're going to put this air filter box back on, once I can remember which way around I put it. These two clips go over this side first, there's two holes in these. See the little holes in here, you put this side over first. Like that, and then the clip goes up the other side. So that's the whole carb back together, and that's how you would do it. But before I do any of that, I'm going to take my tripod off my stand. I'm going to show you a few things I like to look for. 
so obviously I'm looking in here just at these linkages once again just to make sure they're all moving freely as you can see they are make sure nothing sticks and this part here this this actual linkage here still really I'm going to snip that up a little bit more that just bend it a little bit more it just sticks slightly when I'm starting to pull that that's better and this is the governor arm you can probably see a better shot of it here not sure what this part here is exactly for but it bends out of the way um, this is the governor arm at the back you want to make sure there's nothing obstructing that dirt or sticks, twigs, gold grass or anything because all that when I'm moving it about affects all this and this is what keeps the, uh, the revs nice and even on your lawnmower so I'm not sure what that bit is there but I'm going to push that bit back out the way I'm going to make sure the fuel line runs in, in front of that so it's not obstructing this governor arm so I'm happy I've got that back together I've shown you the micro switch you can see here other parts you'll find that may leak that cause running issues you've got an inlet manifold which is in here this is uh, like a plastic pipe that runs right through this is the ignition coil it runs right past the ignition coil into here and this has a gasket underneath which goes to the back of this engine head you get a gasket in there sometimes they leak and of course the engine head gasket is located in here and if the head gasket has gone as well you won't have enough compression your lawnmower won't start a few other things to mention you see this kind of tangle of wires here that go to this micro switch this is how it's exactly supposed to be if you see one like that don't think it's been tampered with that is the actual design and that is how it goes back together another thing to note this actual uh, spark plug lead here should click under there it wasn't under there and the reason for that is because this here has a tiny little cutout section you can see that at the bottom there and that's where that lead goes through so you're not actually trapping it between the flat piece of plastic so when you put that together make sure it goes in there like that I showed you before this is the inside of the uh, recoil with the metal parts you can probably see it better actually from here how the metal just slides along in that little bit of plastic there and I don't really like that very much. You can see how thin the plastic is once it snaps that. That's the end of the whole recoil. So I've got that back together. I think what we're going to do now is we'll just take this outside and bolt this uh, recoil cover back on. And we'll just fire it up and see if it runs. And see if it runs any better. I'm not a uh, thousand percent sure it will run better. But at least I know the carb is completely clean. And I know this spring in here is now working as well so I think we'll have a little bit of a better chance of it running nice and evenly as well the oil's okay in fact it looks clean well, I'll probably change that so I'm going to refit this uh, cover this recoil cover on here I'll put the air filter on and we'll just take it outside even though it's raining still and we'll fire this up and see if it runs any better I just forgot to mention actually there is actually one other thing that you can do with these lawnmowers that will really help them run much better than in the current state and that is actually put a spark plug in it as I said get these at the website repair lawnmowers for profit dot com um, got a box of 10 here these normally last me a while you get them because it's a bit cheaper when you're buying a few at once so I'm going to get one of those we'll put a brand new plug in here as well we'll take this outside as I've said and we'll uh, we'll just see what happens with this so I'll put a nice new plug in there I tend to do them just hand tight and then I just put them in like through here a little bit and I just turn them a little bit like that and that's all you need to do we'll hook that back on there make sure this clips underneath here like this we'll get the recoil here and we'll put this back on it just drops back on there like that that's it I've forgotten to put these parts in the tray I've just found these three parts that go on here in my pocket so that was good that was lucky because that could have easily uh, gone missing, I've got a few spares of those anyway we'll pop them back on the tighten it up and then it's kind of the moment of truth where we can fire this up and just have a look and see if it's running any better what I'm hoping for is it to just run nice and even not fluctuate and not kind of splutter like it did before right I've dropped this outside, I've not tried it, these uh, generally don't like being started up after they've had the carbs and they tend to rev up and down smoke a little bit so I'm going to start it and hopefully I've got everything back together right Hopefully, you can hear that priming, I'll get this to run, so... Right, so 
so that did exactly what I thought it would do actually. What I'm going to do, seeing as there's only me out here today, is I'm actually going to get a clamp. And I'm actually going to clamp the actual uh, dead man's handle at the top so I can leave it running for a bit. I don't suggest you do this, especially if you've got kids or animals or anything about running about in the garden. But I'm going to do it and just leave it running just for the sake of the video, just to see if it evens out a little bit. So I've got a little clamp here. Here's a little clamp here. I'm just going to put that around the top of the handle. Leave that on there. I'm going to leave that running now for a good five minutes, see if it's nice and even. Really happy with that. That's running nice and even. It's not backfiring. It's nothing popping. It's not struggling at all. And that's great, I'm really really happy with that. That's running as evenly as I've ever had an SV150 engine running yet, so I'm really happy with that. The oil wants topping up, but I can sell this soon as a self-drive, self-propelled mower, the self-drive working, carb serviced, filter serviced, new plug, the oil I'll either change or I'll list it, it's been topped up but it's clean. And the next and kind of last two things I want to do, I'm going to tip this on its side and sharpen the blade, it's nice and tidy underneath. And I'd normally do this first, but with the weather being so bad, I kind of just wanted to come in the garage. As long as I don't tip it any further than that. And see under here, how tidy it is. It's not all clogged up, there's not two inches of grass. So I'm going to unbolt this blade. I've got a little bench grinder here. I'm just going to sharpen it up on that. And my balancing tool used to be up on there, but I've moved that. Um, so I can't find it now, so I've tied it up. Anyway, I'll find that and I'll balance it at each edge. I'm going to put the blade back on. I'm just going to tidy this mower up. I'm going to stick this on. I'm going to ask. I think I'm going to ask ninety pounds for this on Facebook Marketplace, and I'll accept anything between seventy and ninety. Just for reference, as well, if anyone's wondering how you know if you've got an SV150 engine, it's actually stamped on the side of this engine block here. It always says something like Sumek Lin High, as you can see there. Sumek Lin High there, SV150. That's how you know what it is. It says on here. The SV150 is actually there. If you have one without the self-drive, I believe it's an RV150, but basically the same engine. So I think we just put the uh, SVs on the self-drive models. So I'm going to take that blade off now. I don't want to see too much fuel coming out of that side of there, which I'm not, as long as I don't tip it up too far. These are generally quite good at not spilling all the fuel out. I should have done this in a better order, really, but I'm going to unbolt that blade, sharpen it up and put that back on. I've just unbolted that blade once again. This Ryobi was powerful enough, this little uh, impact driver, this battery one. This is listed in the description of the video and all my videos, so I use it a lot, this. That's powerful enough to get off 99% of these bolts. I've got a bigger electric one up here, a Clark one, which is in that box, and that's listed below as well. If you get stuck, that one's brilliant, but there's no adjustable torque. But once again, this Ryobi's done the job, and it's got me the blade off there in no time. What you've got to do with these blades is just look at the blade, and you can see... The angle of the blade here, this one looks in really good condition actually. And all you've got to do on the grinder really is follow the natural angle of it along. And then just check its balance. You can even get like a pin on a wall and just put it on a nail on a wall. And just make sure it's not falling one side more than the other. And you can do it that way as well. And you just check it's not balanced. 
like this or anything else, make sure it's nice and even. All I do is follow it along on the grinder and sometimes I'll just, if they're really bad, I'll just wire brush all the dirt off this. Don't really like showing this on videos because you'll get all sorts of people um, telling you you're doing it wrong. But as long as the angle is correct on here, it's quite important really because this provides the back lift from the blade. If you don't have the correct angle, you don't. When the grass gets cut, this this actual blade and this angle of this blade creates back lift, and it's that back lift that lifts the, the cut grass cuttings and pushes them through the shoot into the grass box. So if you just kind of sharpen it however you want and don't follow the angle, you might find that it doesn't pick up the grass very well. So it's kind of important to get it right. So I'm going to sharpen that blade and just clean it up with a wire brush. I'm going to bolt this back on. If you are going to do anything like this. Obviously it's down to you to take your own safety precautions, but make sure you wear some safety glasses as well. So I just go along as I've said and just kind of follow the natural angle of this. Um, and just keep it the same angle I can get. Sometimes you get a really old blade that you kind of have to guess, which isn't too good. Then I just um, wire brush off most of the dirt. And then I just take the actual other part of the grinder that doesn't actually do as much, it's not as abrasive. And I just go very slightly along the other edge as well. You can see here looks more than it is on camera because it lights up in the light. You can see there how oh, there's just a little bit on there you can see because that side is the side that people when they come and pick these up they tip them up and I've had people look at this side of the blade kind of like there and say this blade doesn't look like it's been sharpened so I just put a little bit on that edge as well just in case you get some you know clever person trying to tell you you've not sharpened the blade so that's generally how I do it and I'm going to bolt that back on. I also have this little blade balancing tool here these are fairly cheap in fact I'll link to one of these in the description um, and it's not 100% perfect but you can just drop your blades on here like this and see how it sits in there and you can just have a look and make sure it's not massively overweighted at one end obviously it's not hypercritical it's only a small blade on a bigger mower with the larger size blade it's quite a lot of weight in them and you can get a vibrating issue so it's kind of worth doing that, I just dropped that on there and I'd say I was pretty happy with that really that's as balanced as that needs to be so this little blade balancing tool I'll actually uh, I'll link to one of them in the description of the video I found it actually, I think it was just on here in fact it was up there look hiding up there so I've not lost it so I bolt this blade back on one other thing to mention while I've got this blade off as well this blade adapter here you see this, this is a blade adapter under here, sometimes called a blade boss. See these little pins here? On both sides, they need to both be there. They need to actually sit through the actual holes on the blade. If you find these are missing, you'll find sometimes that the blade doesn't lie flat across this blade adapter. And it's on an angle, even though it's still tight. And you might find that the lawnmower kicks back when you start it. And if it doesn't do that, you might find you get some awful vibrations. So one thing to check when you're doing the blade is just make sure these actual pins on this blade adapter are in good condition. You can see when I put these mowers on, people come and look at these. They want to come and have a look at them, see if they want to buy it. You can actually see there, without taking the blade off, just because I've taken that little bit off there, you can actually just see for yourself that this blade has been sharpened. If you don't do that, I kind of get people saying, oh, it hasn't been sharpened and stuff. So... Just doing that little bit there kind of helps me get the sale sometimes. Right, we'll give this one little fire up now, just because I've had it tipped on a side. 